So here's a hot take for you. You mean hot as in global warming? Bingo! Bingo! So let's talk about how plastic is actually good for the environment and what the catch is. So you lied in the title. Bingo! Hello! But only partially. So what the f*** is plastic? Plastic is one of the products made from refining crude oil, which is basically boiling the crude oil to separate the different parts. And of course, as everyone knows, crude oil is made from dead dinosaurs that took a game of Twister way too far for way too long. So in a way, you could think of plastic as ancient lizard skin. Now, to be more precise, too f pedantic! Whoa, new word. I don't even know what it means. I just read it from the f***ing script. Refining crude oil actually produces naphtha, which is then transformed into plastic through a process called polymerization. It involves making long chains from simple molecules, the poly in the name. It's kind of like a garland. So in a way, plastic is a byproduct of crude oil refining. You're going to get naphtha out of the crude oil whether you want it or not. Brother, uh, what's that? And plastic really is a great material. Plastic. It's, fantastic. it's light and strong, cheap to manufacture in any shape that you want, and inert. But that last advantage is also its worst disadvantage as well. Once you make it, it pretty much never goes away. Just like my son! Wait, you have a son? It's also not really recyclable because you never get the same quality of plastic that you start off with. Basically, once those long chains of polymers are formed, they will only get smaller with time. So we end up with microplastics everywhere. And as everyone knows by now, we're pretty much 50% plastic already. Microplastics have been found in everything and everywhere. But who cares if it's not reactive? Well, yeah, it's not reactive. But the presence of plastic could prevent useful reactions from happening in plants, animals, and us. Ooh! You mean like a condom? Bingo! Hello! Of course, the big problem with plastic is how they disturb ecosystems by just being there and never going away. It's like sitting behind the mountain at the movies. There is absolutely nothing you can do that will make you see the movie. Oh, but it's not you that can't see anything. It's nature. Exactly. So let's just stop using plastic. And this is where we get to the actually good for the environment part of the video. Every replacement for plastic so far has a worse carbon footprint. You want to use glass bottles? They're heavy, so transporting them consumes more fuel, which creates more CO2. Not to mention that production uses a lot of energy. You have to heat sand to over 1500 degrees Celsius. That's over four times hotter than oil refining. And guess what? Heating that sand up creates even more CO2. Then how about aluminium cans? They're light, true, but there is an immense amount of energy consumed to mine for the bauxite that aluminium is extracted from. And that also creates more CO2. What about paper bags? Production makes more CO2, not to mention you have to cut down trees to get the raw material in the first place. Same for cardboard and cotton bags. So basically the choice of using plastic over replacing it boils down to whether we want less CO2 right now and dealing with the plastic waste later, or adding even more CO2 in the atmosphere and accelerating global warming. Yay. Okay, so how bad is this shit anyway? I wanted to put some numbers on this bitch to really understand what we're dealing with here. And I couldn't find reliable numbers for direct comparisons. Turns out it's kind of hard to estimate the greenhouse gas emissions for just part of the supply chain. Unbelievable. I know. But I was determined to find something and mother I did. I found this site that breaks down greenhouse gas emissions by sector and the conclusion is you can f***ing ignore everything I said earlier. Say what? Yep, and it's not even close. Electricity and heating is by far the biggest contributor to greenhouse gases, followed by transport and then manufacturing. So really, worrying about how much extra CO2 is produced from paper, glass or aluminium is like shopping for a new car when you can't afford rent. So, we should really focus more on keeping our planet clean. You know what they say? Don't sh 
where you eat. Plastic recycling is pretty much a lie, so try to reuse as much as possible. The best thing to do is to move towards nuclear, hydro, wind and solar energy, because they have the least impact. But that isn't really something that normal people have a say in. Luckily, on the whole, the trend is towards clean energy. And if you like this video, just give it a thumbs down. YouTube doesn't give a f but I do, and I'll show it in the title. And if you recycle the subscribe button while you're there, you will offset your carbon footprint. So I just made a video where I started from an idea, and while researching it, I realized that it was kind of wrong. You can start from good arguments, but reach bad conclusions. So I guess what I'm trying to say is just keep your mind open and critical.